It's good to be back in Houston. In a divided political era, a genuine bipartisan conversation may seem like a lost art, but finding common ground was the goal of this historic evening. The biggest challenge we're going to have over the next 10, 15, 20 years is to return to a civic conversation. Two political legends, one a former Democratic president, the other a former Republican Secretary of State, sitting down to talk candidly about the issues that divide us. Their chat drew the eyes of the world to Rice University as the Baker Institute for Public Policy marked its 25th anniversary. We are viscerally bipartisan here at the Baker Institute. We're a think tank, policy institute. Its namesake is former Secretary of State James Baker. Mr. Secretary, you founded the Baker Institute in 1993. What brought you back to Rice University after President Bush lost his re-election bid? Well, right after we lost in November of 92, I got a call from George Rupp, who was then President Rice, and they said, we would like to consider establishing a policy institute in your name at Rice University. Would you support that? I said, I'd be very honored. After all, Baker's family roots run deep at Rice. My grandfather was Mr. Rice's lawyer in the late 1800s. In fact, his grandfather, James Baker Sr., is the reason the campus exists. A legendary attorney, he solved the 1900 murder of millionaire client William Marsh Rice. When Mr. Rice died under suspicious circumstances, grandfather said, don't do anything with the body, I'll be right up. Well, right up in those days was two and a half day train ride. It was Baker Sr. who revealed the plot to steal Rice's fortune, millions that were bequeathed towards starting a university. Now, more than a century later, his grandson is leaving a lasting legacy of his own at Rice. We thought there was a, a desire for substantive policy debate in Houston, Texas, the fourth largest city. We are now ranked number three among all university-affiliated think tanks in the world. The Institute funds the research of some of the most critical policy issues our country is facing, from drug addiction to immigration and energy. Edward Dirigen is the director of the Institute, a distinguished diplomat, and a longtime friend of Baker's. I, frankly, in the beginning years, was not too optimistic that we would be able to attract national and world leaders to the Institute. But lo and behold, it's sort of like that film, Field of Dreams. You know, you build it and they will come. And they came. With President Obama's visit, the Baker Institute has now hosted every living former U.S. president, in addition to many other powerful world leaders. The one that really stands out was Nelson Mandela. He was here in 1999. I had to field about 500 written questions. I noticed this one question started, I'm a 12th grader. Mr. Mandela, who are you really? And what will history say of you? So I asked him the question. And he said, a lot of people try to make me out to be a saint. I am not a saint unless you think of a saint as a sinner who keeps on trying. <laughs> Brought the house back. We've had adversarial Democrats, we've had adversarial Republicans. And so people can't brand us as being just on one side or the other. We're very careful to be bipartisan in our approach. And the Baker Institute has used that bipartisan perspective to make history for a quarter of a century now. As Treasury Secretary, Jim ushered in the tax reform everyone had said was impossible. Knowing how to work across political aisles is something James Baker is known for. His legendary career in Washington spanned a quarter century, working in top posts for Presidents Ford, Reagan, and Bush. Not only did Reagan have a Democratic House with Tip O'Neill, who was quite an adversarial Democrat and with whom we were able to work, however, George H.W. Bush had a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate for all four years of his term and we got things done. Twice he served as Chief of Staff, as well as Secretary of State and Treasury Secretary. But politics wasn't always Baker's ambition. As a young lawyer working in Houston, he was encouraged to enter the political fray by his tennis partner, 
George H.W. Bush. When I first moved back to Houston from law school in the late 50s, neither of us had a tennis doubles partner for the Houston Country Club men's double tennis tournament. And they put us together. And that's how we got to know each other. We became very close friends. He was my best friend for 60 years. It was George Bush who encouraged him to run Gerald Ford's 1976 presidential campaign. Then he ran Bush's own campaign in 1980. Although his longtime friend lost that year, both Bush and Baker unexpectedly ended up in the White House. That was just a testament to the broad gauge nature of Ronald Reagan. And he had the wisdom and the good sense to go to someone who ended up being an absolutely perfect vice president for him. Were you surprised when Ronald Reagan asked you to be his chief of staff after you'd run two campaigns against him? You could have picked me up off the floor with a blotter. Of course I was surprised. Jim Baker has helped lead the charge since he strode into my campaign in his cowboy boots in the summer of 1980. As Secretary of State, Baker won the Presidential Medal of Freedom for his efforts to end the Gulf War. As Treasury Secretary, he played a crucial role in passing one of the most sweeping tax reform packages in U.S. history, a historic achievement despite a divided Congress. What was Washington like at that time? Well, Washington worked back then. We sent people up there who went up there with the desire to, to do the people's business. We don't have that anymore. A far different political climate, he says, from what we see today. We are politically dysfunctional today in the United States, and that that's one of the biggest threats facing our country. Today, the press are not objective reporters of the facts. They are players. That's not good for our democracy. The nonpartisan think tank just celebrated its 25th anniversary, providing data-driven research on some of the nation's most pressing policy issues. What do you see in the Baker Institute's future in the next 25 years? We've been successful beyond our wildest expectations. We had no idea that the Institute would thrive the way it has. We have an excellent reputation in the public policy echo chamber. If we're as successful in the next uh, 25 years as we've been in the first 25 years, I'd be ecstatic. For ABC 13, I'm Dave Ward.